So this live tonight is just literally just to go through um, stretching, why we stretch, why we need to do it, why it's important, the benefits of it, uh, why people tend not to do it. Um, yeah, and just have a bit of a chat about that really, a bit of a discussion. No, I hope you had a nice time. Oh, oh, I did, thank you, last weekend at the Cotswolds. Yeah, beautiful, really, really nice. Thanks, Nat. Um, I'm actually going to Devon on Thursday, so yeah, quick quick trip home and then um, off again. Um, so there's a few things that we do at AbFab um, in regards to stretching. So it's, it's really, really a really important part of any sort of workout that we do. Um, so we stretch after, well, we try and stretch pre-workout. So pre-workout, we try not to do a static stretch because there are reports out now that it's actually detrimental to muscles. Um, so if muscles are cold and then you stretch them to their full length, um, it's actually quite detrimental. So we, we um, or science now does say that dynamic stretching is a lot better for you. Um, so we do stretching before workouts, we do some mobility as well, which I'll go through, and then we do some stretching or cool down stretch at the end of each workout that we do. And we do that because it does help prevent DOMS. Um, we all know and love the feeling of DOMS when we've been working hard and our muscles are sore. Um, if we don't stretch, then the next day you're gonna feel your DOMS a lot more than if you spent 10 minutes stretching at the end of your workout. And then as well as that, um, it does maintain your um, flexibility in your muscles and that, may, and that helps your joints maintain their full range of motion. Um, and that is really, really important because you cannot work your best unless your joints can move at the full range of motion that they are capable of. Um, and then if you do try and move more than your joints can move because your muscles are tight, then you're going to get an injury and that's why we get injuries because your muscles are remaining weak and inflexible. So we don't want that either. Um, so before we start any workout at AbFab, we do our, obviously we do our calf stretch. Hey Shanice, you right? <laughs> uh, we do our calf stretch. Um, so we all know the calf stretch. We all kind of do it on autopilot now. Um, sometimes we get a bit complacent about it. Sometimes we get a bit blase about it. Um, and we stand there and we just wiggle our feet up and down, um, do a quick static stretch and then you think you've done your calf stretch. But it's really, really important that we do this because we want the blood to be pumping into those muscles before we even try and start to use them in a workout. So when we say stand by the wall and stretch your calf muscles and roll toe to heels, you know, really pump in those feet nice and, oh, that's a bit wrong. How do we do it? That way. No, <laughs> that way. <laughs> when we ask you to, hey Claire. <laughs> so when we ask you to do pump your calves, um, this is to literally get the blood flow going in your muscles and start to warm the muscles up slowly. And that's what we call like a dynamic stretch. A dynamic stretch is a low intensity movement of the muscles to start slowly warming them up. Um, we don't like it if you come in and just do a static calf stretch straight away. Um, as I've already said, it's not good to stretch your muscles when they're cold to their end range of motion um, because they're just going to tear. Um, and they're not going to like it and they're going to be sore and they're going to fatigue a lot easier. So we say roll toe to heel for a while um, as a dynamic calf stretch just to get that blood pumping into those muscles, getting them warm. And then we put our feet into three different positions because it hits different muscles in the legs. We've got the soleus and um, so that the soleus protects your Achilles tendon, um, so in the lower part of your, the back of your leg, and then you've got your, um, your calf just above that, so we try and hit both of those, plus all the tendons and ligaments around it as well. So that's why we, we say you know, toes forward, heels in, heels out. Um, and there is a video on the app that you can have a look at if, you, if you're not sure um, what I'm talking about, but hopefully you will do. Um, and then obviously after they're warmed up a little bit, then we, um, then we advise like a nice static calf stretch with, um, with ourselves leaning into the wall, either the toe on the wall, so you can really lean into that stretch and get some nice length in your calf muscles before we all start jumping around. 
So basically, that's why we do our calf muscles, to avoid any injuries. A lot of ladies have tight calf muscles, and especially if you've been sitting at a desk all day, um, you get in your car, you drive to the gym, your calves have, really haven't had a chance to get warm. Uh, and similarly, if you do a 6 a.m. class, you've probably just jumped out of bed, um, straight to the gym, in your car, straight to the gym, and again, your muscles haven't had a chance to really warm up during the day, or during the night even. So um, that's why we do our calf stretch, and we spend you know a good five minutes trying to trying to get those calves nice and warm because we don't want you to be injured. We have had a few sort of torn calf muscles in the gym over the years and we really try and avoid that kind of thing because they take a long, long while to heal. So we don't want that to happen to anyone else. Um, so that's the importance of the calf stretch. So after the calf stretch, we'll do a little bit of a warm up and then we go on to our mobility. So the mobility again is a form of stretching. Um, but th again, this is a dynamic, sort of stretching that we do to get all your muscles nice and warm, prepped and ready to work out and work the best that they can do. Um, so we do start with shoulder rolls. So the shoulder rolls, the shoulder is a ball and socket joint. Um, so that likes to lo move in lots of different planes of motion. So forwards, backwards, up, down, flexes, extends, does all sorts of things. And for your shoulder muscle to work effectively, you need to warm it up so that we get um, a fluid called synovial fluid um, flowing in that joint. Um, and that lubricates the joint. This is for any joint as well, it's not just the, the shoulder joint. So the synovial fluid lubricates that joint and then it can, if it, work, it can work more effectively and your tendons and your ligaments that are all attached to that joint um, can work nice and smoothly and you don't have a rough surface or anything like that so that's how your body works when it's warm um, and it just helps the joint move as it should um, so we do the shoulder rolls so obviously to get your shoulders nice and warm um, get the synovial fluid flowing in the joints um, and then we do our chest openers obviously so these are to warm up your pec your pec muscles you've got pec minor pec major um, and they help support your whole entire shoulder girdle so your shoulder girdle is all the top part of your spine and around your chest. Um, obviously that has to be nice and mobile and flexible to help support your shoulders, give you strength there. Um, and then we'll do some lateral flexion. This is where we start warming up um, around all the muscles around the spine and all the muscles of the torso. So this, so lateral flexion is what we do when we're doing our side bends. Um, so the spine flexes, so, um, so when we're leaning forward over a desk, that's spinal flexion. When we are rowing or taking our chest up to the ceiling, we've got spinal extension, we've got spinal um, lateral flexion, sorry, so we're going sideways, so that's your sideways bends. Um, so that's warming up your internal and your external obliques, which are part of your core muscle system. Um, and then your spine rotates as well, so that's why we start doing the spinal rotations after that. So we warm up the internal and external obliques. Then we do our spinal rotations, and that starts to warm up all the muscles and the ligaments that support your spine. And your spine is obviously one of the most important, or well, the most important, no, actually your heart is probably the most important thing in your body, but <laughs> your spine is the most important thing when it comes to movement, mobility, and flexibility. Um, and we really, really need to look after our spine. We've got 33 vertebrae in our spine. They've all got spongy discs in the middle. Um, we need them all nice and warm before we start doing all those flexing, extending, lateral flexion. So that's why we do the rotations. Um, and then we do our leg kicks as well. So um, if anyone's been in my classes, I always do hip circles. So that warms up the whole hip structure as well. So again, ball and socket joints in the hip. So they need all that nice synovial fluid flowing before um, they start running, jumping, and all that kind of good stuff that we do in class. Um, then we do our leg kicks. That's just generally to really warm up the hip flexors. So the hip flexors sit kind of, um, the top of your thigh goes through the front of your hip, and then it kind of ends at the bottom of your rib cage, your psoas muscle. So they, um, they get very, very tight, especially if you sit a lot all day. Um, hip flexors are notoriously tight, they don't like working, and we don't want those all tight, so we need them nice and warm. Because um, if anyone's ever done mountain climbers and you get that pain in the front of your hip, that's your hip flexors um, moaning and groaning that they're having to do some work. 
um, where they've been nice and tight and comfortable when, when you've been sitting at a desk all day. Um, so that kind of starts to activate your hip flexors and it also starts um, switching on your brain just to start saying, hey glutes, start working, start working. So the glutes in your bottom, biggest muscle in your body, your powerhouse, um, we need to make sure your brain is saying, hey, you need to start working. Um, so that's why we do all the mobility as well in class. Any questions? Hey Belinda, how is your trip? Looks good, looks good. Hey Chola. Any comments, any questions so far? So I've just gone through why we do our calf stretches. I've gone through um, why we do all the things that we do in the mobility before we start our workouts in class. So I'm just going to quick check. Give me a heart, give me a like. You're doing lots of walking, Belinda. Hopefully you are. <laughs> hey, Tash. Hey. So, um, if you missed the first half, you'll have to go back and watch it, obviously. Um, for those that just joined me, I've just gone through why we do our calf stretches at the beginning of the class. Then we do our warm up, and then I've gone through um, what we do in mobility, so why we do the shoulder rolls, why we do the chest openers, why we do the lateral flexion, why we do the rotation, all to protect that spine while we're working out, because it is very important to us. Hey Michelle. So I was gonna go through um, some of the benefits of stretching anyway. So regardless of whether you go to class or, or, or anything like that, um, a lot of people do yoga or specific stretch classes because it does make you feel good. Um, and so I was going to run through some of the benefits if you even if you didn't do a specifically hard workout cardio wise or resistance training it's always good to try and fit some time in the week even if it's just once a week even if it's a quick YouTube video or some of the on-demand stuff that we've got on the app um, just to do some some mobility because it's really really important especially especially as we age um, that mobility and being flexible in the in our muscle structure is so 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 important. Um, we don't want to be getting old, do we? And be you know in our what do we call them twilight years, <laughs> um, having to rely on other people for our mobility or um, things like wheelchairs and other aids like that if we don't have to. So if we can keep our whole skeleton and our muscles nice and healthy, hopefully we're going to be nice and mobile as we get older and older and older and we can live a nice healthy life um, and you know do all the good all the good stuff that we see all of the little old people doing uh, so so benefits of um, of stretching so we can make sure that we are as flexible as we can possibly be um, so when we stretch we help those tired constricted muscles relax um, and that will eventually help you be more flexible um, if you just stretch once a week you'll find it's going to take a little bit of time to start feeling a bit more flexible but it's one of these things again everything is about consistency so if we can consistently stretch um, our muscles you will find you'll get more and more flexible um, and even if you just do one one stretch session a week uh, obviously we do stretch after class but it's, it's three to five minutes and it's really not long enough. Each stretch needs to be held for at least one minute to be effective, um, which is why a, a specific session that you can do in your own time maybe um, is really good for um, maintaining our flexibility. So give it a try. So even if you do one session, um, you, can, you can measure how flexible you get. So you can go down, you can touch your toes, see how far you, you get down, um, see how flexible your hamstrings are, do a, a session and then see at the end um, how much you've improved just touching your toes um, in that one session because I can guarantee you, you will see an improvement. Um, it also improves our blood circulation so it also allows your body, so this is I'm talking about stretching after class now, um, so it allows your body to cool down and your blood circulation and your heart rate to return back to normal. And with the muscle, with the muscles, your blood has been pumping in that workout out to your heart, out to your lungs, and that's where it's all been concentrated. You've had 
blood flow to your muscles, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't be able to move. Um, but the concentration of your blood flow is in your cardiovascular system. So when we stop and we cool down, we get that blood flow back into the muscles and that can help with the muscle repair uh, and bring the muscles, um, again, be more flexible. Um, any questions so far? Hey, Caroline. No comments? Talking about Donna's movie? Awesome. <laughs> I feel like I'm just waffling. <laughs> I don't like feeling like I'm waffling. <laughs> uh, so we've got um, so the benefits of stretching. Increased flexibility. We have uh, improved blood circulation. Um, and then what else builds up in our workout that we need to try and eliminate? Now, it would be really nice if GP could have a 6 a.m. or 5 p.m. stretch class on a regular basis. Lots more can make it then. Yeah, we're definitely looking um, where we can fit more stretching. Um, obviously, we've got a late one on Monday. There is one at Thornwood on a Tuesday at 8.15, I think, which Lizzie does. Um, and that's also um, online. So um, hopefully, if, if you could make a morning one, that would be great. The trouble is if we did a 6am stretch class then there wouldn't be a 6am functional fit and then that wouldn't be good either. So it's it's just a case of trying to fit, fit stuff in um, that suits the majority at the moment. <laughs> Tash says I'm not waffling. Thanks Tash. <laughs> Alright, so we've gone through um, increased flexibility, probably the most important thing. Uh, increased blood circulation as well. So during our workouts, if we work at a moderate intensity, which is basically what most of our classes are, so moderate intensity, 65 to 75% of effort, your body produces lactic acid. Um, and you will all know what lactic acid feels like if you all know Sally. Who knows Sally? Who knows that feeling? in your quads, so the front of the thigh, who knows that nice feeling, halfway through Sally. <laughs> Over lockdown, that Monday class was so good. Ah, oh, thanks Donna. It was good, it was something different, wasn't it, for people to, to come in. Makes you sleep well as well, I keep getting that. <laughs> Tash, yeah. Yeah, so we all know that feeling in the front of your quads when we're doing Sally. That is because you're working at a moderate intensity and you're mainly working your quads, obviously in your glutes as well, because you're squatting. Um, but that feeling that you get in your muscle, that muscle fatigue, that is lactic acid. Um, and you're gonna have residual lactic acid at the end of a workout anyway. So when you stretch, it helps to release and eliminate the rest of that lactic acid. So you just breathe it out returns back to oxygen. It's all very sciencey, I won't go into that. But anyway, it turns back into CO2 and then you breathe it out. Um, but it does help eliminate that residual lactic acid. We don't like that. Lactic acid is a good thing. Um, it stops you pushing yourself too far. <laughs> Matt Brown, we told Deb we were bored on Friday. She made us do Roxanne and Sally. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> you won't do that again, will you? <laughs> That was good. Well done, Deb. Well done. Never moan at a coach. Never moan at a coach. Because that's what you get. <laughs> so, three benefits so far. Increased flexibility. Improved blood circulation. Eliminates your lactic acid. It also boosts energy as well. Um, so, as your body cools down, uh, your brain starts releasing those really magical, feel-good hormones, the endorphins. Um, so... You know, as you cool down, your body releases these endorphins and then you'll feel better and then you'll leave with that magic word, energised. And that's, that's the whole reason why we work out, isn't it? To feel good, to feel energised, to feel nicely boosted, to feel like we've done something really good for the day. And that's your endorphins working and the stretch at the end of class helps boost that as well. And then... I would say probably the most important reason why we, hey Vicky, you're right. Uh, the most important reason that we do 
stretch at the end of class is to improve our range of motion. So our range of motion is the full range, so my elbow joint is the full range of motion, this is the full range of motion, this is not the full range of motion. So your muscles are tight and you can't, for example, fully extend your bicep because you've got DOM, because you haven't stretched, then obviously that's detrimental to this elbow joint. Um, so the muscles that haven't been stretched uh, remain constricted, as I've just said, you know, get your DOMS, so you can't, oh my God, my bicep really hurts, I can't straighten my arm. That's, that's because you've not stretched it out um, and you've worked it too hard. So obviously we get DOMS on the eccentric part of the exercise. So that's the part of the exercise that has the, um, the micro tears in the muscle fibers, but that's a good thing because that helps our muscles grow. So um, stretching helps prevent that DOMS type feeling. So, and helps to um, keep that full range of motion of the joint. Um, but if your muscles, if you don't stretch ever, your muscles are gonna remain constricted and eventually that's gonna lead to you not being able to use them fully. Um, and as you age, that tends to happen to um, a lot of people that don't um, don't focus on their flexibility. They just carry on working out, working out, daily life, daily life. Really don't have time to start stretching. And you'll see that with people that work at desk. And you'll see them start to have this rounded shoulders posture because their chest muscles are tight from being all hunched over, keyboard all day. And we don't do any stretching of those back muscles to lift that chest um, and make it a bit more flexible. So that's a kind of real life example of, um, you know, pe people that don't stretch, they're gonna end up like this. And eventually when you're old, you've seen old stooped up, old people like this, you know, they've got kyphosis in their spine because they, they've got a nice hunch back because that's how they spend their life, not stretching. So. We don't want to be like that either, do we? So we need to really, really stretch. Hi, Monica. <laughs> Donna, never, never say that to a coach. Yes. Good advice, Donna. <laughs> Take heed, everybody. <laughs> um, so that's probably the paramount reason why we need to stretch. Um, that we need to keep our muscles and bones as healthy as we can as we age because mobility. when you don't have your mobility, you... you don't have, you, oh, I don't know, there's not even a word for it. You, you don't want to be immobile as you go older. You want to be able to live your life and live it to the fullest you possibly can. And to do that, you need to keep your muscles and your joints nice and healthy. So stretching and mobility is really, really, really good for them, as well as a healthy diet, obviously. Um, and then um, another reason is, um, is psychological as well. So when we stretch, we kind of, get to connect with our body um, and it's really important especially for your mental well-being it can relieve stress it's a time for you to just really kind of connect to your body um, it gives you a chance to tune into yourself check how it's feeling um, you know is your body feeling exhausted today is your body feeling tired um, is it feeling good is it feeling sore are there any muscles that are particularly tight you think oh my god i've worked them really hard today Maybe I need to give them a bit of a stretch. Um, you know, so it's a really good time to check in with yourself and, you know, just for that mind-body connection as well. Um, you get stiffed hunch and it's not good for you. No, it's not good for you. Really not good for you. We don't want to, we all don't want to be little old ladies walking around, do we, like this? We don't want to be doing that. So it's really, really important to just stretch those chest muscles. Lots of rowing movements to counteract that. Nat Brown, exercise really helps me going through the menopause. Yeah, that's also a massive, massive benefit benefit of I mean it benefits everything. There is not a bad thing about exercise. <laughs> it's really, really good for your mental well-being as well. Uh, and as I said, stretching and mobility does negate modern life. I mean modern life is literally sitting at a desk. I'm sitting at a desk now, I'm trying not to be too hunched over. Um, so sitting at a desk all day, your hamstrings are going to be tight, your hip flexors are going to be tight, your core is going to be weak, you're going to have a tight chest. So all these things really need a good stretch out, your hip flexors especially. Um, so um, you can either Google a hip flexor stretch or 
if anyone specifically wants any stretches to help their hamstrings, help their um, hamstrings don't tend to need stretching if we sit down a long time, um, or sorry, I've got a sitting down job because they are actually lengthened but tightened all at the same time. Um, so they are already lengthened, especially if your knees are flexed. Um, but it's really especially important to stretch your hip flexors if you're feeling any discomfort in your hips. Um, stretch your piriformis as well, that gets really, really tight. So your piriformis muscle sits in your hip, it, it helps stabilise your hip. But the thing is with the piriformis muscle, even though it's a tiny, tiny little muscle, your sciatic nerve goes through that. So if your piriformis is tight from sitting, you can actually start to get that sciatic nerve pain. So it's really good to stretch the piriformis muscle daily, as well as your hip flexors, as well as your chest. And it's also good to do lots of core strengthening exercises, not because we want a six pack, as Claire said on her live last week, all about having a six pack, um, but to increase your core strength to help stabilize that hip area. So we don't want that hip to anteriorly tilt. We want it to be nice and straight in that nice neutral spinal alignment. Um, and the more we can do that, um, the more flexible and the more mobile that we will be. And then, Obviously, we've all had hip pain, we've all had pain in, in our lower back. Um, if we get pain in our lower back um, on one side, that's maybe a sign of um, sacroiliac, uh, I can't remember the other word for it now, um, SI joint um, issues. Um, and again, that's all related to tight constricted muscles all around your hip structure um, and tight hip flexors. So it's really, really, really important um, to try and get at least 10 minutes of stretching in twice a week, even if it's not a live class, because um, obviously I understand it's late and we've only got two on. Um, go on to On Demand, grab, grab a mobility video off of there. There's loads on there. There's some from me, there's some from Katie from when she was with us. She did loads and loads and loads of stretch on, the, um, on there. So they're all on there for you to be able to look at. Um, we've also got loads of mobility um, videos on our new app as well, which aren't our own specific workouts, but they are on the app. So you can go into the workout section, the workout video section, um, and there you can choose um, some mobility, some mindfulness. There's lots of mindfulness stuff on there as well, which is also really, really important. Um, and all these things just, just help your body keep nice and healthy, um, helps your mental clarity as well. Um, and you know me, I love a bit of stretch. So, <laughs> anyone got any questions, any comments, any issues? Does anyone want to tell me why people tend not to stretch? Any reasons why they think people just think, eh, not doing that? <laughs> any any reasons why you think people? I mean, I've got three different ones. See if we can, see if we can come up with them. Anyone, anyone got any comments on that? It's really hard talking to my screen when there's no comments. <laughs> so, what are the three? What do you think are the three main, um, three main reasons why people don't stretch, don't want to do it after class? Anyone? I'm gonna give you five seconds. Four seconds. Three, two, one. Okay. Um, so the three, the three uh, main reasons why people don't stretch: time. They don't plan plan their time. We plan a forty-five minute class, which does include a cool down at the end. But people are like, oh my god, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to go. Um, we try really, really hard to have classes running on time so that we can include that stretch. So you make sure you're not running out the door with your muscles again all constricted and tight and not flexible. People only tend to stretch when they have pain. Yes, indeed, Tash, that is so correct. All of a sudden, oh God, my back hurts when I walk, I have a quick stretch. But one stretch may help in the short term, but you need to you know, have a regular and consistent pattern of stretching, even if it's once, twice a week, 10 minutes can all help. Um, so time is one thing. Um, Doing it, uh, I, I would say lack of knowledge because they stretch only when they have pain um, and that is probably due to the lack of knowledge but you guys have all sat and listened to this so now you have the knowledge. I was 
is not aware before I joined how important it is to stretch before exercising to avoid possible injuries. Yeah, see, it's a, as well as being a, a really great community, really good for your health and well-being, um, the knowledge that you get from this community as well is, is amazing. So I'm really glad that's helped you, Monica, um, to be aware of that. That's really good. Um, so the main reason people don't like it is time. They feel like they've got to rush off. Um, but actually we do fit it in with, within the 45 minutes of the class um, and people find it difficult um, because they are so tight and they don't stretch and they're like oh that's too difficult it's too painful I don't want to do it I don't want to do it but you don't have to stretch to your full range of motion to stretch you can stretch to where it's comfortable that's all we want you to do if that's comfortable for you then just be there and then the next week maybe you can come a little bit further a little bit further so it's all about progression as well. Consistency equals progression, and that is exactly the same with stretch and mobility as well. Um, so don't not stretch because you find it difficult, okay? If you find it difficult, you need to stretch, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and then um, the final one I, I kind of found was people find it boring. Um, loads of people say, oh, it's just really boring, it's really boring, I find it so boring. But... When you reconnect with yourself, go inside your body, really feel how you're feeling. Body scan yourself. Take the time to say, okay, I'm, I'm doing this to relieve stress. I'm doing this to feel better for myself. I'm doing this for my body. I'm doing this for my body for when I age. It's a good thing. When you go back and really focus on yourself and why you're doing it, then you won't find it boring. Yeah, okay holding something for ages and ages is not the most exciting thing in the world but you know feel how your body's you know feel how your body is feeling at the time maybe you should move it a little way forward maybe if you do a little tweak on that stretch you think oh god that feels a lot better you know so you don't have to just i don't know why i'm doing this position but <laughs> that's, that's my pretend stretch <laughs> So just, you know, play around with that stretch, you know. It's amazing what your body can do when you really sort of progress it. Yeah, thanks, Tash. So try not to run out at the end of class. Try to fit your stretches in. I know sometimes life gets in the way. That's understandable. But if you're running out of class every single week because, oh, I don't need to stretch, that's rubbish. Give it a try. I do lots of ball rolling too. Yeah, ball rolling, foam rolling, also really good to release all the fascia around your muscles. So all our muscles have got fascia around them, so it's a bit like a chicken skin. <laughs> so it's all your connective tissue, um, and that can also get tight, and that benefits a lot from foam rolling. So um, the, there's a big area in your back, uh, in your lower back, that's all fascia, it's where your lats and all your hip muscles connect to. Um, and that is just fascia, it's not actually a muscle, and when that gets tight, that's, that can be super painful, so it's all, you know, foam moulding, all your fascia is also really, really good, if you can do that a couple of times a week, that's also really beneficial. So, um, yeah, I've been chatting now for 45 minutes, so I'm going to disappear shortly, unless anyone's got any questions. Um, so next time you're in class, stay for the stretch. Don't just go through the motions. Oh, I'm just stretching in like this. So really, really stretch it out. Um, if you find it difficult, definitely stretch at the end of class. And if you find it boring, go inside yourself and just, you know, body scan, see how you're feeling. Say, oh, you know, I'm going to do this. Just, just have five minutes for me. Um, because we all have busy lives and we don't find time for ourselves. So that little five, ten minutes at the end of class to stretch. Um, it's just time for yourself, just time to really, you know, reconnect with your body, which is really good for your mental well-being. Um, has anyone got anything else that they want to ask me, want to tell me, want to admit to? Anyone want to admit of running out of class? Anyone want to admit, ah, oh, just going through the motions because I have to be here? Is anyone going to look at stretching in a different way after listening to this, maybe? Hands up. <laughs> Anyone at all? No? Okay. Hey, I've got one thumbs up. One thumbs up. <laughs> 
So I hope this um, I hope this has helped. Um, just go through the benefits of stretching, why we do it, why we do the calf stretching, why we do the different parts of mobility at the beginning of class, um, and why we do stretching at the end. It's all really important. And at the end of the day, it is all to keep us nice, mobile, flexible, and being able to live a nice, healthy life when we're old. Because we all see old people now um, that probably haven't done that and and it's detrimental to them. So we don't want that. We want to live great healthy lives all into our old age and twilight years. And the more we stretch, the more we stay healthy, the more we can do that. So I will bid you goodbye and have a lovely Sunday. And I will see you all in the gym in the week. So get those classes booked. Eat good food. See you later, guys. Bye.